Hello, my friends. Welcome back to our children's Bible stories, The Sacred Steps of Jesus. And here we are in our sacred space inside Clinton Avenue Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Mark, the pastor here. And this is our fifth story about the steps Jesus was taking. Now, Jesus is talking to a religious leader, and his religious leader is saying, mm, you know, this guy Jesus is a really good teacher. He's an excellent healer. But our Savior, the Son of Man, the Son of God, that's a little too much for me to comprehend. And so Jesus tells him a story about Israel's past. I bet you've seen this symbol before, right? You see it on hospitals and ambulances. That is a snake on a pole. Now, you see, years before Jesus, the people of Israel were going through the wilderness, and they came to a place where there were a lot of snakes. And people were getting bitten by these things. And they said to their leader, Moses, he's the greatest lawgiver of the people of Israel. He led them out of slavery in Egypt. Well, he prayed and said, God, what do we do? These snakes, these snakes are like ridiculous. And what God told Moses was, you take a snake and you put it on a pole, and you hold this up. Actually, it was a bronze snake. It wasn't a real one. It was a, um, it was a sculpture. Put it up on the pole, and anyone who's looking up at that pole, even if a snake bites them, it's not going to hurt them at all. And most people aren't even going to get bit. So Moses took a bronze snake and put it on a pole and held it up high. And everyone who saw that was saved from the snakes. So Jesus told this religious leader, you remember that story, he said, don't you? And the religious leader said, of course. And he said, well, the same thing's going to happen to me. And then you'll understand salvation. I'm going to get lifted up high too on a cross. And anyone who puts their faith in me will live after they die on this earth. Now, you see this church here? This church is in Jerusalem. Yes, I took this picture. It's in the called the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. We believe that on the spot where this church is was where Jesus was crucified. And just like the snake was held up for all to see, he was up on a cross for all to see. Now, later on, Christians built a church on top of this mountain where we believe Jesus was crucified. But you know, there's a question. Why did Jesus need to be crucified for our sins? Shouldn't we be punished for our own sins? Well, we wouldn't be able to withstand it. We're only human after all, right? We would not be able to to survive God's anger in our sin. But Jesus could because he was God and human all at the same time. I know that's a hard one, but we believe that. And so to help you understand, I'm going to tell you the story of a bee. Okay? There are some people who are allergic to bees. If they get a bee sting, they'll die. There's other people who get stung by a bee, and it's, eh, hurts a little bit, big deal. So, there's a story that one day, 
a father and a son were out driving in a car. Now, the son was very allergic to bees. He would die if he got stung. And, of course, he's panicking when this bee is flying around the car. And the father reached out, grabbed the bee in his hand. And, of course, he's getting stung. But guess what? He's not allergic. And so the bee could sting, 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 and sting. And eventually the bee died because the father squished him. And yeah, father's hand hurt a little bit, but it wasn't fatal. And he protected the little boy from what would have killed him. So Jesus knew that if we got all the punishment we deserved for bad stuff we do, we'd never survive. And so he said, look, I'll take on the wrath. I'll take on the punishment. Guess what? I can deal with it. And so just like Moses held up that snake on a pole and the people survived the snakes, so Jesus got raised up and he took God's punishment for us. And so we spend our lives being grateful to Jesus for doing that for us. And every day of our lives, we say, Jesus, what can we do for you in return? And that, my friends, is why Christian churches have a cross. That is why some of us wear crosses. Because we remember, we remember all that Jesus did for us. I thank you for joining me. I'm asking you a favor, though. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, please like it, comment it, share it, that others will hear this. This is our fifth week of walking in sacred steps with Jesus. I'm Pastor Mark of Clinton Avenue Reformed Church. I pray God will bless you today and until next week when we'll be on together for the next story.